How's it going, everyone? We are here to evaluate some cafe value uh, for FanDuel. How's it going, Jason? Doing well. Doing well. Doing well, swell, uh, glorious. Well, just well. This is our last pod for today. I'm burned yeah. out. Mm. I'm ready to go. Yeah. I need to go lay down. I need to go watch the Dodger Nationals game. On a scale of 1 to 5.3, how are you feeling? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know why that that five point three threw me off, but yeah. like, like a three point eight, I guess. Three point eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, well, if yeah. I was like, value, I'd maybe be like a yellow, yellow two, yellow one. Mm-hmm. I like that. Okay. Uh, let's get into some quarterbacks here. Uh, I'll just say the three, and you can spit out all your hot takes. Uh, Alex Smith, Dak Prescott, Blake Bortles started talking alex smith love that play love his stacking you, options chris conley for president Woo! yes you you love alex smith at 6800 um my my expectations are are not high for him they're not high what's not high like 25 points <laughs> no that is that's 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 insane i mean is is the possibility there sure if everything sets up perfectly in terms of game flow yes um does he have some potential does he have some cheap stacking options is it a cheap stack is it a great matchup yes i, I do like this matchup with the raiders they've lot the second most fantasy points uh two quarterbacks this year uh, their passing attack alone kind of leaves opposing teams throwing a little bit more. We've already seen Alex Smith have two games where he's thrown 45 plus times, uh, which is a little bit crazy. Um, but if it's a closer situation, like the previous two really haven't been, obviously he came back from that San Diego game, but there is some potential. 6,800. I still like Brian Hoyer a little bit more for 200 and more. Hoyer's just been reliable, um, but I, I see the appeal here. See, people wanted us to disagree, and this just happened, you know, organically. We, we, throughout um, the start of the week, you've been on Smith, I've been on Hoyer. And you're wrong, and you're wrong, and I hope you know that. And I no, hope you it, feel, anyone who, who's this excited about Alex Smith is, is wrong. And I hope you, you feel bad when you're wrong. <laughs> when Alex Smith outscores Brian Hoyer by one point this weekend. Because, oh, good luck. Um, no, I mean, realistically speaking, we're talking about, you know, 16 to 18 for Alex Smith this week. Um, in, a, in a good range of outcomes, though, you know, I could see two to three passing touchdowns, 250 to 300 yards against this, you know, Oakland bad uh, passing defense. So I do think the upside's there. Uh, I'm being a little facetious right now, but yeah, overall, I, I do think it's there. Uh, next one here, Dak Prescott against you know, the Packers who are good run defense and they kind of funnel to the passing game. I don't know how good this passing game is though. I'm curious to see this game is really intriguing because I, I just feel like one um, we're, I'm looking at this game and I, I kind of glossed over it for the most part uh, when kind of looking at guys there, Dak Prescott, obviously the price tag 7,200 is, is certainly reasonable. If Des Bryant comes back, obviously I think you got to give him a little bit of more of a bump uh, because Des Bryant's going to help out any quarterback. Yeah, I, Green Bay. I mean, obviously the good run defense. Um, you know, have they played anyone noteworthy? I think this is their first real test, uh, especially with that offensive line. There's no other team that really compares Oakland. Maybe the closest one to to an offensive line that good for Dallas. But um, this could be interesting. I, I think if Aaron Rodgers plays like last week that Prescott's going to have a lower ceiling um but if he's that same efficient quarterback that we know and love that puts kind of a shoulder to Prescott to kind of have to throw a little bit more um and to kind of force things and we haven't really seen that it's been really moderate in terms of the play calling for Prescott I'm curious to see when the doors get blown open and they have to come back from two touchdowns if that's the case this week how well Mm -hmm. he handles it um is it in play not for me, um, but I can see the logic here if you want to kind of build multiple lineups and toss him in. Um, but I don't think he's making really the first two cuts for me in terms of the quarterbacks I'm looking at. Right, I definitely agree. Um, on to running backs here. Mark Ingram popped up on the injury report. He also popped up first in cafe value here. 
Major bummer. Uh, hopefully, you know, he's right for Sunday because he has a great matchup. Uh, other two here, Theo Riddick, Kristen Michael. Two very intriguing options. You know, at the beginning of the week, um, what? You don't, uh, want to talk about, you don't want to talk about Blake Bortles? I mean, we can. I, I like him. His price on FanDuel is a little, a little high for me. You, no? I, I like the Bortles a rub stack. All right, let's talk about Bortles in Chicago. All right, I mean, 7800 that's not a bad price. It's not I mean, bad. It's not bad. It's still cheaper than, you know, those elite guys, but, you the know. The difference, I guess the difference for me is he's 6300 on DK, where it's almost like a punt play, and then that's, you can throw A-Rob in there. But if you throw Bortles in there, you're going to have to throw A-Rob in here. And it's much more expensive, feel. yes. Yeah, but he, he does pop up. I mean, in terms of cafe value, they are cafe values digging it. Um, the Chicago pass defense is banked up. I mean, Allen Robinson is going to see Tracy Porter. That's a mismatch. I think 10 plus targets for his way is, is going to be huge. I, I think Robinson's a standalone play. I don't think Bortles is. Um, mm. I think you got to pair the two together. Certainly agree. Um, so that's fair, anyhow. Running back backs. to Mark Ingram. Uh, I know you were excited about him. What, what? Where are you at now? Well, if he's not 100%, obviously the big downgrade. Um, you know, you look at this matchup. Carolina's rush defense is certainly their staple so far this season between being a, an average defense and a completely awful one because their pass and, and secondary defense has just been horrendous. Um, Ingram, I mean, we're, we're kind of staggering for, for guys below 7,000 this week in terms of running backs. And there's a couple here, but Ingram, I think in terms of touches, is going to be the safer option. Um, if he plays, that's the thing. I mean, it was just an illness. He does still have some time to get ready. You got to imagine if he, even if he's feeling about 78%, he's going to be given it a go anyway. And, and that's still good enough for me. Um, I like the red zone touches. I, I think, you know, touchdown and back to back weeks. I think that trend continues. Um, so in terms of an RB2, uh, I'll, I'll definitely be giving him a look. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Theoretic against the Rams. Uh, what's your opinion on that? This one. I can't really get behind it. One, I, I think it depends on which Rams defense actually shows up. Um, and I think Riddick is, is really dependent in terms of touchdowns to really hit a, a ceiling uh, on FanDuel because it's not the full point PPR site. Um, much like last week, I mean, if he didn't get the touchdowns, he, he would have been a mediocre play. Um, you know, I, I don't think the yardage is quite there to balance things out. So GPP at best, I, I don't think I'm, I'm really going to be looking his way. Uh, this week, I, I'd rather actually take a stab at Marvin Jones if I am looking at Detroit. Yeah, I, I think that's a good call, though. We we have noticed um, Rams have been a little susceptible to pass catching back so far this year. Um, Kristen Michael against the Falcons. Okay, okay. It's not it's not the same price we got him for you know earlier. But no. 7,400 in terms of, of backs, I mean, obviously we like DeMarco Murray, we like Le'Veon Bell, we like Michelle McCoy. There is a little bit of a price difference from those guys. Um, obviously, he's been very solid this year. Um, 63 attempts, 4.6 yards per carry. In the right spot, I do like him. I do like the Falcons' defense in terms of picking on him, um, with, both with the run and the pass. With the weather concerns here, I think Michael obviously will get a bump for me if, if weather kind of looks like it's a downgrade for the past because obviously you're going to shift over to Michael there. I think he's more of a GPP guy. I'd rather use guys like McCoy, Murray, and, and Bell in cash games. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Um, 74 is just a little, little too pricey, but uh, I, don't, I don't mind it. And you mentioned to me before the show, might be some weather there. So, I mean, if that does change things, you know. Maybe. Maybe. Um, Doug Baldwin, uh, same game. More what you're looking at, you know, in, in that game? Yeah, I think so. I, I, out of the, the weapons that are, are happening there with Jimmy Graham, Michael, Baldwin. Baldwin ranks second for me. I like Jimmy Graham first. Um, you look at this, still a, a healthy team total despite weather rolling in. This Atlanta secondary is bad. Ranks 24th against the pass, 22% DVOA. Um, weather would be the only thing that would probably keep me off of, of Baldwin uh, at this point. But otherwise, I think 
he's a reasonable price at that price tag. Um, you know, both his games that have been huge upside. It's been at home this year. Um, we know, you know, the touchdown upside that he has. Uh, we also know that, you know, he can break a big play at any time. We've seen that a couple times already this year. So I like Baldwin. I think he's a reasonable shot again. Um, I just think weather's going to be the only concern. Yeah, and then I think you kind of look at the next two guys here, Cooks and Landry. Landry, a nice correlation play with any Pittsburgh Steelers, um, especially if you think that game's going to get wild. I mean, and you think Pittsburgh's going to get ahead. I think Landry's a really nice play, really safe, even on FanDuel. Um, Cooks, interested in your opinion there. I, I think the pricing is what makes it more appealing to me. 6900 it's not a bad price. I mean, that's that kind of fits in, especially with this week and how it's shaping up in terms of running back pricing. Um you know, I, I don't think you're going to see three targets like he did last week. I think that was, um, you know, a little bit misleading in terms of what we can get from him. Because before that, I mean, he's been double-digit targets every week. Um, and you look at the Steelers, not a good secondary. I think he is a great correlation play. He's not Brandon Marshall-esque um, like he was last week, how we used that as a correlation. But uh, in terms of, of targets, they're going to be there. Um I think he's relatively safe for the price. If he was about 500 more, I'd probably be off of him. Um, but 6,900 is certainly reasonable. Absolutely. Um, and I guess, you know, there are some really nice pay-up options, obviously, Antonio Brown this week. Is the mid-range something you're looking at, or is it more – I mean, you have to make some tough choices this week. Are you looking at this range of receiver? I am, yeah. I mean, I, I, I like Brandon Cooks a lot at 7,500. I like that range. I like Cooper. Uh, I like Crabtree as well, Macklin. I, I think those guys are – it's a range where you want to go because, you know, you're kind of – McCoy, you know, as you mentioned earlier, I mean, it's just that running backs, that tier, you want. I mean, you want it this week because they're all in such prime matchups. So I think this is where I'm going to be sticking uh, for the most part. I think Cooks is a really nice price tag. I think he's going to be a guy I kind of staple into a lot of my lineups. Been pretty quiet since that first game, but eight to ten targets. You know, I think you can count on this week in a matchup against Carolina, who's really struggled against opposing wide receiver ones. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Zach Ertz leads off the tight ends here, uh, pulling up my heartstrings. Ah, uh, what are you doing with this information here? GPP only. That's it, and it's yeah. going to be a minimal GPP. Like for me. Out of my GPP lineups, he's only going to be in like one, one or two. Right. Yeah. It's no. Just... I'm. I'm. I'm with you. Um. I, I want to play it. I just think last week was enough for me to like. You know, hold the hold the horses a little bit till we see him fully acclimated to this new system. Um. Zach Miller and Dennis Pitta are the next two listed here. Do you have a favorite of those? And I guess. What's your thought process on those two? Miller, I think it's just kind of old reliable at this point. You know, with Hoyer under center, you know what you're going to get from Miller. Um, I think the matchup, obviously Jacksonville, you know, has done pretty well against tight ends this year, um, different from last season. But Miller just kind of a, a staple for, for Hoyer in this passing game. And, and they're throwing a ton. I mean, that offense is actually rolling pretty well in terms of getting a good mix of Jordan Howard touches. But also, you look at Hoyer and he's throwing 40-plus times a game. So... Um, a decent matchup in my opinion for him. I, I think the, the numbers on paper are a little bit skewed. Uh, he's not the cheap guy that he was a couple weeks ago or, you know, down at the 5k mark, but in terms of kind of pivoting off of Walker or Graham, it's still a noticeable difference in terms of value. Agreed. Pitta though, I kind of like, I, oh. 5,400, I, I mean, likely no Steve Smith, Mike Wallace just talks about him not being out. I mean, there's a lot of targets to be kind of going around. Um, and Dennis Pitt is going to be kind of a guy to look at. So um, in this matchup against against New York, I mean, that defense has been really hit or miss this season. Um, he's Pitt has seen eight or more targets in three of the last four games. I think that could be kind of a reliable option there. So if you want to stick down for a couple hundred less, I think Pitt is a far safer option than Ertz is at the same price tag. Definitely. Um Certainly like that. Uh, I think there are some interesting pivots in this range, those three. Um, Pitta wasn't one I really had thought about, but yeah. I mean, before Steve Smith really emerged, it was Pitta. He was kind of the guy, so could be interesting. 
Um, defenses. A tough week for defense. So I'll be honest, in terms of what I've evaluated through the first five weeks, I felt the optimizer and Cafe Value has done the best job on defense, which I think is really underrated. Like defenses are a huge deal in tournaments. Um, if you don't, if you're not getting that 13 to 15 points from your defense, you're not really winning a GPP. Um, so being able to find some value here uh, is nice. What 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 did you think of the Texans Bills Seahawks combination that spit out? So Houston caught me a little bit off guard. I expected the other two. Um, I, I just still feel like Andrew Luck and this offense is still going to put up their share of points. But given the fact this offensive line is just so, so bad, there's definitely a chance for three to four sacks or more. There's definitely a chance for turnover prone, you know, Andrew Luck to, to give away a pick six or to give away, um, you know, uh, an interception or two. You also got Will Fuller back there on special teams. I think that's an overlooked part. Um, in the fact that he's got tremendous speed, as we saw, you know, a week before last uh, with his, you know, uh, punt return. That kind of makes him in play in GPPs. I think Houston kind of is an intriguing tournament option because I don't know if people are going to be looking at them. I, I really don't. I think they're going to be pretty low owned. Last game of the day, 4,400. So, you know, 400 less than other, you know, Bills in Seattle there. So, I, I kind of like the pivot. I think it, it's grown on me. And obviously, Cafe Value, as you mentioned, has just been nailing them week in and week out and making me look like an idiot some days because I'm just like, no, <laughs> I, I am not doing that. So it's, it's you know, yeah. I'm sitting here. It's it's feeding me the information, but I'm just like, no, stop. I, I learned my lesson after week two. It threw out the Chiefs. I didn't believe it. You know, Chiefs put up 33, and I just say, okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, do your thing. Right. Yeah. All right, man. You know, and last week the Vikings were really, really key for me on FanDuel. And uh I, I think the Bills Seahawks are really where I'm headed this week. Is that something you like as well? Yeah, Bills are tremendous. Uh in mean, twelve sacks in the last four weeks, averaging two point two takeaways this season. I, I didn't realize this. I mean, they didn't really pop up on my radar each week until this week, but four double-digit fantasy point performances in five games this year. I, I I just wasn't on them in terms of looking. It's just been so easy just locking in Minnesota and, and, and going, but um, that that kind of surprised me, and, and I don't think Colin Kaepernick is going to scare me off of them. Um, I, I just think overall there's a lot of upside, especially they're at home. Yeah, um, I think I think that's certainly interesting. We haven't seen a Matt Ryan blow up week in quite some time. Um, you know, he's got us tricked right now. You know, where what was that cartoon with with the uh, coyote and the and the speed thing? In <laughs> Roadrunner. Yeah, like <laughs> we're we're just walking, you know, That's under the un, <laughs> under under the. Under the cliff right now, we're going to get an anvil dropped on our heads one of these weeks with Matt Ryan. Um, so is this the week? Yeah, I mean, they just got to watch out for that speed thing wide receiver Julio Jones. But outside of that, I, I think we looked last week. I mean, they put up some points against Denver. It had a lot to do with the running game. I mean, we well, obviously we saw Tevin Coleman break one off and, and Freeman was pretty successful. Um, Seattle, in terms of upside, I, I don't really like them. Um, I don't think they're a team that can really break off like a huge outing like the other two teams. They're a safe team, though. I, I still think 7 to 10 FanDuel points is where you're going to see them. And if weather gets really bad, obviously that, that bumps them up because you you're not going to see Matt Ryan throwing 40-plus times, and, and, and there's always a chance for turnover. So um, Seattle's always in play at home. Relatively you know, good spread for them in total uh, to kind of target against, but I, I think I prefer Buffalo. Certainly. Uh, any other thoughts um, on what we just went over? I don't think so. I mean, you look at this week, I think it is a different. I think this is the first test that we really have um, because those obvious, obvious value plays aren't there this week. So um, mm -hmm. it's going to be the test for those who go balanced or for those who want to pay up for entire Tony O'Brien and Le'Veon Bell in the lineup and, and really dive down elsewhere. So um, from what Cafe Value has sped out this week, it, it seems like, um, you know, going balance is the way to go. It could be very interesting. Um, 
as always, thanks for tuning in. If you like what we're doing here, check out dailyfantasycafe.com uh, to check out this article. Um, like and subscribe if you like the podcast version of the article. Um, and as always, you know, we're around. Comment in the YouTube comments. Uh, throw us a tweet on Twitter. Um, we will be around. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys in week seven.